Uh, good morning, everyone here. Uh, good morning here to the people on, uh, online and people here. Uh, it's a good day for to praise God. Uh, blessed Sunday. Um, let's just take this time to open up some prayer. Bow our hearts. Bow our heads. Lord, thank you for this Sunday, Lord God. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to go to church, and Lord, just thank you for another day, Lord God. And Lord, let this Sunday be dedicated to you. Lord, just um, speak to us today. Be with us today. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and let's worship God.
By your stripes, I am healed. 
your stripes I am healed with one touch I am made whole you have spoken and I know that it is so come on sing with me sing with me in the storm you are peace and your love won't let me spoken and I know that it is so you have spoken and I know that it is so
flawless. You are perfect in all of your ways, faultless. You are perfect in all of your ways. To you are, and you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, can you see? You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Come on, say. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. That one more time. You're a good, good father. Kingdoms rise and fall. Empires rise and fall. Government changes. But you will remain good. You're an omnipotent, all-powerful God. Who left his throne, came down from heaven to earth. Just for us just for us. Thank you, Father, for giving your Son for us. For that love. For that blood that was shed on the cross. And may it be true, O oh God, in our hearts. May it wash away all the lies of the enemy. That we think that we don't have anybody that loves us. That sometimes, Lord, the lies of this world is louder. But Lord, let it be true right now. Let your truth ring louder than the lies of this world. That you are good and you are perfect. Sometimes it's we make it so complicated. We have to say all these things and we have to say all these complicated words, but it's as simple as it is. He is good and he never changes. He is good and he never changes. And we worship you, Father God. We worship you. We honor you this morning, O oh Lord. And this is, it is this season. It is the season, O oh Lord, of thanksgiving. It's December where we celebrate, O oh Lord, the, the coming of your Son. But we, may we not forget you, Father, who sent your Son. You are a good Father. Thank you for welcome, welcoming us in your family as your children, as your son and daughters. And as we, oh God, listen to your word, Lord, open up our hearts. Prepare our hearts, oh Lord. Open up our spiritual eyes and ears so that we can receive from you, oh Lord. Lord, we set aside any distraction from the enemy. And may you be enthroned, oh Lord, in the midst of us. No other name be lifted up. No other name be magnified. We worship you, oh Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you today. 
Can we give a, our good, good Father a praise that is worthy of a kingly praise? I don't think you can hear me right now. Can we give our good, good Father a praise that can be heard from here to the outside? Lord, we praise you and we honor you with everything that we have. We praise your name. We bless you, Jesus. Name above everything. We honor you, O oh God. We praise you and we worship you. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your presence, Lord. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Invade our space. Be with us. Do what only you can do. Lord, we pray for our tithes and offerings that you use it, O oh God, to forcefully advance your kingdom. Lord, we just pray for the word as Pastor Rick comes up and preaches lord i pray that every word that will come out from his mouth comes from you lord we just just welcome you right now oh god we welcome you in this place we praise you we honor you and we carefully give you back the honor praise adoration in jesus name we pray amen you may be seated in the house of the lord Thank you, worship team, for ushering in the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. Well, I would like to welcome our church family here in the building and uh, our church family and friends joining us online. We are Shepherd's Pastor Assembly, and you are welcome here. I want to begin this morning by sharing a, a testimony of what I witnessed and what you witnessed these past two weeks. You know, Shepherd's Pastor Assembly is gifted in many ways. One of the gifts is their worship, the worship team, under the leadership of uh, Brother June. I like to call him the anointed one. <laughs> but he's a very humble man. He's just <laughs> but you know what you witnessed last week, if you recall, who led us in worship? It was Brother Conrad. Today was his son. As a father... I don't think there is anything greater that you could experience as a man, as a father, as a grandfather, is to pour into your family, to pour into your son, and not only to be a part of the worship team, but to lead us in worship. Amen? I had the privilege of, of witnessing this when uh, Jacob was first born, and to see him grow in the Lord. He didn't grow by just sitting in these chairs, these pews. It was poured into him. Not just here in the church building, but at home by his father and by his mother. Amen? And here you've seen the fruits of their labor. As you know, our, our youth, our generation, my grandkids, they're exposed on a daily basis to things of this world. And it's up to us, not the schools, not the government, to teach our children about the Lord. Amen? And again, to see uh, Joshua up here just... God is so good. Amen? Let's open up in a word of prayer. Well, Father, we thank you for this Sunday morning, this day we recognize as the Lord's day. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Speak to our hearts. Encourage us. And if need be, Lord, convict us. We are trusting in you this morning with all of our hearts and help us not to lean on our own understandings. You are a good, good Father. Thank you, Lord. We love you, and we are careful to give back to you all the praise and all the glory. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. 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 I've titled this morning's message, In Everything We Give Thanks. You know, each year that I live, I become more mindful of being thankful for each experience life has to offer. And I've learned to ask myself, whether the life experience is good or bad, what can I learn from this experience? 
I must constantly remind myself that no matter how good or how bad you think life is, to wake up each new morning and to give thanks. And today was no different. This morning when I opened my eyes and I took a deep breath and I looked around, I said, thank you, Lord, that you allowed me to experience today. Because none of us, I don't care how young you are, how strong, or how healthy, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. Today is a gift. And we need to, you know, when you stop for a moment and think about it, if you were to think, what if, what if God imparted into your heart that today would be the last day you would spend here on earth? Would you do anything different? I know I would. I would probably make some phone calls. I'd probably do some visits. Think about it. Today is your very last day here on planet Earth. What would you do different? Would you be sitting in front of the TV watching the Charger game? Maybe some of you would. I don't know. <laughs> Me personally, I'd be reaching out to those I love and I care for. I would savor every breathing minute until the, door, the Lord called me home. And once again, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. What a gift. We have so much to be thankful for. But yet we can be focusing too much on the things of the world that can take us away from the Lord. Maybe you don't have that dream home right now. Maybe you're not driving the latest model car. But look around. You have life. You have breath. And you have Jesus. In Psalms, next slide, in Psalms chapter 9, verse 1, it says, I will praise you, Lord, with all of my heart, and I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you, and I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. As we begin each day, we should pause to consider God's blessings. God's gifts are, of course, too numerous to count, but as believers, we should attempt to count them nonetheless. Our blessings include life, friends, family, talents, opportunities, and possessions, just for starters. The Greek biographer Pultark observed, the worship most acceptable to God comes from a thankful and a cheerful heart. Amen? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Next slide. I heard Dr. David Jeremiah share a story about a mother who got a call from school saying that her young daughter was ill. She hurried to pick up her child from school and then called her doctor. But her doctor's schedule was already overbooked for the day. But he could see the child the following morning. In the meantime, the doctor recommended an over-the-counter medicine to ease her symptoms. So the mother tucked her little girl in bed and drove to the pharmacy and bought the medicine. She hurried back to the car only to realize that she had left her keys in the ignition and locked herself out. When she called her daughter to explain why it was going to take a little more time to get home, the little girl told her mother to find a coat hanger. Mommy, she said, I've seen it on TV. You stick this coat hanger down inside the window, you hook it on the handle, and the door will open. Well, the mother didn't know that her little girl was so street smart. But she went back into the store, got a wire coat hanger, and made an attempt to open the door. And it didn't work. She couldn't figure it out. Finally, she was so frustrated that she lifted up her racing heart to her Heavenly Father. And she said, Lord God, I don't know what to do. My keys are locked in the car. My little girl's homesick. And I'm here with this stupid coat hanger. Please send someone to help me. She finished her prayer. And this car pulled up at the curb. The passenger got out, and he had this rough look. He didn't look like someone God would send, but he was there. He hadn't shaved for days, and it occurred to her 
that he might be homeless. But she said, here's God's answer. She said, sir, can you help me? What's the problem, he said. Well, I've locked my keys in the car, and I got this coat hanger, and I don't know what to do with it. He said, lady, let me have your coat hanger. After bending the coat hanger and inserting it down inside the window glass, he opened the car door. Pretty scary thing that people can do today. The mother was so overwhelmed that she threw her arms around this scruffy old guy and gave him a hug. She said to him, you're such a good man. You're such a good man. He said, lady, I'm no good man. I just got out of prison this morning. <laughs> and as he walked away, the mother lifted up her hands to heaven and she said, Lord, thank you for sending me a professional. <laughs> you know, sometimes God answers prayers in unexpected ways. Amen? And you know, some of you are professionals in your former way of life that can still glorify God. Amen? Amen. True story. I have a, a friend of mine. He's a pastor of a local church. In his former life, before Christ, he was a professional car thief. He stole cars for a living. But he's now serving the Lord, pastoring a church. Imagine, imagine. I'm not saying it's Pastor Noel, but imagine <laughs> Pastor Noel's, <laughs> imagine Pastor Noel's that pastor and someone in the congregation says, Pastor, Pastor, I locked my keys in the car, or, or I, I can't find my keys. I, I. And Pastor, no worries. No worries. This pastor here, anybody is in his congregation, within two minutes, he can have that car door open and have it started. God is good. <laughs> Next slide. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, it says, God chose things. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. But God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So God can use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He can use your old professional experience to give him glory as you've come to Christ. Every single one of you are a testimony. Your life is a testimony. You are a work in process. You will always, you will always be a work in process till the day the Lord calls you home. We are never finished. You always have to be on guard. You know, the enemy's, his whole plan is to seek, kill, and destroy. And you can never, ever uh, be in cruise control. You always have to be on guard. This morning, we will be talking about the attitude of gratitude. Next slide. In a devotional book titled Jesus Calling, the author of the book, Sarah Young, identifies two things, she says, that is impossible to do if you are a born-again Christian. Sarah writes, it is impossible to spend too much time thanking and praising God. Amen? It is impossible to spend too much time thanking and praising God. Last week, or was it two weeks ago, we had the Friday night worship. If you've never experienced that, I would encourage you, just out of, even if it's out of curiosity, just to come for a, an evening of worship. It is impossible to spend too much time praising and thanking God. And that once a month Friday is exactly that. We just come together and we're just praising and thanking God. You know, there's something about being in a, in a church building, a uh, um, life group, a Bible study, that when you're in that presence, no matter what you're going through in your life, it doesn't seem to matter. You're in the presence of the creator of heaven and earth. Right now, as the word declares, when we gather just like this, just the two or three of us, he is right here in our very presence. And can you imagine just... And again, what you witnessed this morning, to see uh, uh, Jacob up here, that's what I said, Joshua. 
<laughs> when you see Joshua up here, I see what his father and his mother had poured into him. He didn't just one day, Brother June says, hey, uh, Joshua, lead us in worship. No. Brother June, being a man of God, he's got a tremendous responsibility. And, you know, the Word of God says, lot, not many, lot, let not many of you become teachers because you will be held at a higher level of accountability on Judgment Day. So Brother June has a huge responsibility in his, in his uh, being the uh, worship team leader. And he saw something in Joshua. He's led by the Spirit. And you witnessed this morning a, a youth. He's very well-rounded. He's do, doing well in school. He excels in sports. And I'm not lifting up Joshua. I'm not lifting up Brother Conrad and Michelle. I'm lifting up Jesus, what Jesus has done in their lives and what they haven't imparted into their sons, both of them. And to God be the glory. And I encourage you as parents, as grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends, pour that into them. It will never return void. These kids, this youth, they are up against some things that I know when I grew up, we, we, this is a whole other level of demonic activity in this world, in our schools, yes. our government. I'm not going to go there, but you know, you know what's going on. But we can't give up, and we got to fight, but we fight on our knees. It's hard to retreat when you're on your knees praying, thanking and praising God. There's something about when you're in that spirit of, of worship and praise, nothing else seems to matter. Nothing. God created you first and foremost to glorify him. Thanksgiving and praise put you in a proper relationship with the creator of heaven and earth, opening the way for his riches to flow into you. Next slide. In Psalms 34, 1, it says, I will bless the Lord all the times and praise. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Again, praising him. This morning, the moment you woke up, thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing me to experience this brand new day, December 12, 2021. This is history in the making. All creation has never experienced today, and here we are. And you had a choice today. You had a choice to come to church, and you're here. And God bless you for that. It's too easy today to get, you know, get comfortable. Again, I was listening to David Jeremiah. He was encouraging people. We need to get back in church. This COVID thing, it's a little behind us. You know, if you're in your pajamas, Get dressed. Go to church, wherever God's leading you to church. You know, next slide. A quote from H.A. Ironside. He says, we would worry less if we praise more. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. Thanksgiving, praise. Try it sometime. Try it. I challenge you. Try to spend too much time thanking and praising God. Let me know. You know, we can spend so much time, well, let me say this. Compare how much time you spend praising God, thanking him, to how much time you spend on social media. Ouch. Ouch. I don't have Facebook. I mean, I have it only when we started doing Facebook here in church. I have zero friends, so. Sorry. Aw. Aw. <laughs> But I, every day on Facebook, I get those notifications. People want to defriend you. I, or is that what it's called? They want, yeah. <laughs> I'll friend you. <laughs> yeah, friend requests. I've never accepted that one. The only friend I accepted was Jesus Christ. Next slide. Psalms 145, verse 1 says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name on Sundays only. No. No, forever and ever. I cannot, I cannot stop thanking God for what he has revealed to me in my later life. I've shared before, I, I didn't have this revelation until I was like around 40 years old. So some of you younger folks will say, well then, 
Well, I can't wait till I'm around 40. I want to live my life right now. I want to enjoy the things of the world. None of you, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. We have to, you know, th this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Praising God, thanking him, is not reserved for Sunday. It is not reserved for a midweek life group or Bible study. This is a, a way of life. You've been saved. You've been delivered. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You cannot thank him enough. You cannot praise him enough. And the older I get, the more thankful I am for the things in life that I used to take for granted. And one of them is health. You young folks will one day experience it. Right now, you're on top of the world, you know. Though when you start to get up in age and you start to feel the aches and pains of just this body starts to, parts start to wear out and you find yourself busy more with doctors and this, uh, Lord willing, next Saturday, I'm going to uh, an event. It's a car event. A friend of mine has a shop, and it's an annual thing. And a bunch of friends hang out with their low riders, hot rods, hot rods, and custom cars. And it's just music, food, and there'll be a lot of uh, adult beverages there. But I find in a time like that, as we get older, a lot of the conversations are the surgeries. <laughs> The medications, <laughs> the hospital visits. <laughs> and I have this one friend, that's all he talks about. It's like, you know, bro, I hear you. I kind of got my own too, but I just kind of want to hang out with, with you all, you know. I'm not going <laughs> to drink those refreshments, but I don't, don't want to hear about your surgeries and your aches and pains. But then again, I'm in that environment, and I'm sharing Jesus. So, and they're probably saying, you know what, Rick? I don't want to hear about your Jesus. I don't just want to hang out with cars. Well, that's just who I am. I hear who you are. I'm a fool, but I'm a fool for Jesus. Who's, who are you a fool for? You know, researchers have discovered that the vast uh, psychological benefits of gratitude and filling our prayers with thanksgiving is the highest form of it. Next slide. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. You cannot thank and praise the God of creation too much. There are many benefits of practicing gratitude, both mental and physical. Regular practice has been shown to have measurable positive effects on your health. Have you ever been around a person, as I was kind of alluding to, a person who is always negative or complaining? You know, you could be having a good day, whether it be at work or with your friends, and this person comes along, and it's, they're just flat out depressing. They just have the, the gift to be able to take out the light in any room, <laughs> any joy. You know, it's like... God, I was having a good day till, I mean, you don't say it, but yeah. Yeah, I know you're thinking it. I was having a pretty good day till you showed up. <laughs> and uh, a lo a lo <laughs> this, this, is a, uh, this is years ago, and I see Brother Carlos back there. He can attest to it. We used to, and I'm not proud of this. I'm just keeping it real. We used to meet every Thursday night and play horseshoes, the men. we go to my house, my brother-in-law's, and we'd rotate. And it was, my dad would show up, my uncles, my cousins, brother-in-law's, it was just, we'd just play horseshoes and with adult beverages, lots of them. <laughs> and we would play till like sometimes two, three in the morning, every Thursday. Well, there was this one time, one of the guys there, he's just, he was one of those, He'd always talk about his problems, his marriage. And one day, uh, one of the seniors in our group, it was actually Snooky's dad. <laughs> he looked over at him. He goes, can you just shut up? <laughs> I'm, right, I'm listening. He goes, I'm tired of hearing your problems about your marriage. 
I just want to come here and play horses, drink beer, have a good time. I got problems. You got problems. Rick's got problems. Shut up. <laughs> he got the message. You know, gratitude has been shown to help contribute to an overall sense of well-being. Stress lowers the immune response to potential bodily threats, whereas increased mental well-being can help your body fight off illness. A good attitude. Giving thanks and praise. Practicing gratitude has also has the ability to improve other aspects of physical health. It can reduce the risks associated with heart failure. Gratitude is one of many factors that can contribute to positive mental health outcomes. One 2020 study showed that regular, regularly practicing gratitude can help ease symptoms of anxiety and depression. And an older study noted that gratitude was linked to improved mood. I mean, we should try it. Just no matter what the circumstances, no matter what you're going through, give thanks, give praise. Cannot spend too much time thanking and praising God. Practicing gratitude fosters positive feelings that can contribute to a sense of well-being when done regularly. It is one thing to be grateful, thankful, and praising God for what he has done in your life, but it's another thing to tell someone about it. Don't keep it to yourself. Next slide. In Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 40, there was a man with leprosy, and he came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you are willing... He said, can you heal me and make me clean, he said. You see, God has given the Israelites very specific instructions on how to deal with leprosy and other skin infections. Anyone suspected of having this disease had to go to a priest for examination. Next slide. In Leviticus chapter 13, verse 2, when someone has on the skin of his body a swelling or a scab or a bright spot, and it, and it uh, becomes an infection of leprosy on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the sons, or his sons, the priest. The priest shall look at the infected area on the skin of the body, and if the hair of, in the infection has turned white, and the infection appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is an infection of leprosy. And when the priest has looked at him, he shall pronounce him unclean. If found to be infected, the leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. The leopard then was considered utterly unclean, physically and spiritually. Incurable by man, many believe God inflicted the curse of the leprosy upon people for the sins they committed. In fact, those with leprosy were so despised that they were not allowed to live in any community with their own people. Among the 61 defilements of ancient Jewish laws, leprosy was second only to a dead body in seriousness. A leper wasn't allowed to come within six feet of any other human, including his own family. The disease was considered so revolting that the leper wasn't permitted to come within 150 feet of anyone when the wind was blowing. Lepers lived in a community with other lepers until they either got better or died. This was the only way that people knew to contain the spread of the contagious forms of leprosy. Contagious forms of leprosy. You know, looking, uh, let's, go, let's go to the next slide. And Mark, continuing on in verse 41. It says, moved with compassion, Jesus reached out and touched him. We just, we just heard 
is a very contagious disease. And here Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Instantly, the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. Then Jesus sent him on his way with a stern warning. Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But the man went and spread the word, proclaiming to everyone what had happened. As a result, large crowds soon surrounded Jesus, and he couldn't publicly enter a town anywhere. He had to stay out in the secluded places, but people from everywhere kept coming to him. You know, uh, I was looking online when it came to looking for some pictures on leprosy. Wow. I would, if you're weak hearted, don't do it. I could not stay on that line, on that link very long. It is a horrendous, horrific disease of deformation of noses, ears, body parts, hands, fingers gone. It's just horrible, horrible disease. Imagine this leopard infested with this debilitating. He's a total outcast from his family, from society. He can't come within six feet of his own blood family. He, if it's windy, he can't come within 150 feet of another human being. And he hears of this Jesus who has the ability to heal. And what does Jesus do? Moved with compassion, Jesus reaches out and he touches him. Can you imagine when's the last time he's ever been touched by another human being? And now he's being touched by God Almighty. And Jesus says, I am willing, he said, be healed. But Jesus warned him. He warned him. Don't go and tell nobody. Just go to the priest. Go to the proper procedures. But what did he do? He went and told everybody. You know, in the spiritual realm, you and I were, in, were infested with leprosy in the spiritual realm. And when we came to know Jesus Christ, when we asked for forgiveness, when we repented, and when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Lord and Savior we were spiritually cleansed from spiritual leprosy. Amen? Amen? And now, like this leopard, we should be go out there proclaiming, telling everyone what Jesus has done in our life. You cannot spend too much time thanking God for cleansing us from spiritual leprosy. You cannot spend too much time praising God for delivering us from this horrible thing called sin. So let us learn from this leopard. Tell someone. You don't have to preach. You have a, everyone in this room has a testimony of where you're at, where you're going, and, and to God be the glory. To God be the glory. I have the opportunity. We're closing on in this year. Every single week this entire year, I've been with a different family. I've had opportunities to be in their living rooms, preparing for their loved one's uh, celebration of life. And just recently, I was with a family, and they were heartbroken. He was a great man, the way they explained it to me, and he was a man of God. But they're grieving. They were mourning. And I learned to be patient and to listen. And then I had an opportunity, and I said, can I share a little personal testimony? about a book that changed my life. I said, I used to fear death, believe it or not, because I had no hope. I didn't know what the Bible said about the afterlife, about heaven, the promises. 
I said, I, growing up, one of, one of my greatest fears was public speaking. And I was introduced to this book that changed my life. And there was about six people in the room, and I could see them. They're all leaning in. They said, what book is it? I said, the Bible. They go, okay. <laughs> I mean, it seems so obvious, but I get so many responses. They go, well, what, what book is it? I go, the Bible. And I began to share. I said, here I am. Used to fear death. Had another fear of public speaking. And God said, I can use you. God will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So now I speak in front of hundreds of people, hundreds, weekly, yearly. I'm in their living rooms, testifying. And then I ask, can I pray? <laughs> it doesn't get, I, I can't thank God. I can't thank and praise God enough for this season that he's allowed me to experience. I have met so many families, and they've almost become like families to me in some cases because I do follow-ups. I'm doing weddings. I do prayer at their house or talk to their kids. But, you know, this leprosy, it is a horrible, horrible sickness and disease. But, you know, there are also people who are called to reach out to the lepers. I haven't received that calling. Almost every age has had its social outcasts, people barred from normal society, whether through physical illness or national origin. One, next slide, please. One person who stepped across these barriers in India was a pioneer missionary named Mary Reed. Mary Reed was a hardworking and accomplished school teacher. She responded to the call of God for missionary service and departed for India in 1884 at the age of 30. Already working in India, Mary visited a leopard colony and was deeply moved by these people's plight. Later, Mary contracted leprosy herself and went to work with the leopards, eager to tell them that she knew firsthand their pain and trauma. She became head of the leopard colony she had visited, and in the years following, many were saved and a church built. Mary retired at the age of 84 after many years of faithful service to these social outcasts. Mary worked with the leopards until her death in 1943. The Lord allowed her 58 years of missionary service, 52 of them among the leopards. She accepted the hardship of an incurable illness and chose to faithfully minister to other lepers with the good news of God's love and salvation. Mary Reed serves as an example to all believers of glorifying God and giving thanks in the midst of her hardships. Amen? What, what a calling. What a calling. This morning I said we're talking about the attitude of gratitude. I'm thankful that God has reserved a place for you and I, a mansion in heaven. And God sent us, he sent you and I an invitation through his son, Jesus Christ. We're going to see here in just a, a moment about the importance, about how important it is to respond to an invitation. Uh, next slide, please. Ruth Ann Metzger is a professional singer. She was invited to sing at a very extravagant wedding of a very wealthy man. Ruth Ann and her husband, Roy, were excited about going to the reception. And the invitation indicated the reception was to be held on the top two floors of Seattle's Columbia Tower, the Northwest's tallest skyscraper. When they arrived at the site, there were waiters wearing tuxedos, offering hors d'oeuvres and fancy foods to the guests. The bride and groom were standing at a gorgeous staircase of glass and brass that led up to the top floor. A satin ribbon extending across the stairs at the bottom was ceremoniously cut. The announcement was made that the couple was about to enter. The guests would follow the bride and groom up the stairs as the feast of and festivities was about to begin. Ruth, Anna, and Roy were among the other guests 
as they arrived at the top of the stairs. They were greeted by the maitre d' who was holding a bound book outside the entrance door. The maitre d' asked, may I have your name, please? Ruth Ann announced their names. My name is Ruth Ann Metzger, and this is my husband, Roy. The maitre d' searched the M's in his book. I'm not finding your name. Would you spell it, please? Ruth Ann spelled it very slowly. The maitre d' looked at the list again and said, I'm sorry, but your name is not here. There must be some kind of mistake. I'm the singer. I sang at the wedding. The gentleman responded, that doesn't matter who you are and what you did. You must have your name written in the book or else you cannot enter the banquet. Just then, he motioned to a waiter and said, show these people to the service elevator, please. They were escorted past the beautifully decorated tables, the whole smoked salmon, and the magnificent carved ice sculptures. Next to the banquet area, an orchestra was prepared to perform with musicians all dressed in dazzling white tuxedos. But Ruthanna and her husband were escorted to the service elevator, heading to the parking garage to miss it all. The rejected couple located their car, driving several miles in shocked silence. Roy reached over and put his hand on Ruth Ann's arm. Sweetheart, what happened? Tears swelled in her eyes. When the invitation arrived, I was busy. I never bothered to RSVP. Besides, I was a singer. Surely I could go to the reception without returning the RSVP. Amen. Amen. How much more <laughs> the kingdom of heaven. This story fittingly illustrates the bitter disappointment and rejection that many will face when Jesus returns to earth to his wedding banquet. Next slide. In Matthew 22, verse 2, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some of his more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted calves have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was outraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corner and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding garments. He asked, how did you get in here without the wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, take him hand and feet and throw him outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. God has invited you and I to his son's wedding banquet. Have you RSVP? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to RSVP. Tomorrow may be too late. And that's great if you've answered yes, I've RSVP'd. But what about the rest of your loved ones? Sadly, some people are just too busy to RSVP. They plan to get around it someday, answering the call to accept Christ, but they just put it off. 
Many know they should change their lives and get serious about following the Lord, but they have other priorities. It's apparently easier to rationalize and believe that God will give them a free pass to enter because they never did anything wrong in their view. We have a responsibility. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, praise God. But what about your, those closest to you? Your wife, your husband, your sons, your daughters, your aunts. Your, there's this unlimited amount. Yes, there is a mission field. There are people like Dr. Fidel who are called to the places of the earth we will never go. But there's a mission field right in your home and your extended family. I am thankful. I am grateful. And you should be too if your name is written in the book of life. Next slide. In the, cha in, in the Gospel of Luke in the 10th chapter, it says, The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the field, to his fields. Now go and remember I am sending you out as lambs amongst wolves. Then he said to his disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall down from heaven like lightning. He says, look, I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. Amen. In Psalms, next slide, Psalms 100, verse 1 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Next slide. In John 10, 27 you know, Jesus is referred to as the good shepherd, and we are his sheep. He says, my sheep listen to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. So let us be encouraged when you've taken that step of faith, no matter what you've gone through or will go through, no one can snatch you out of his hands. Next slide. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. This will be a glorious day. But sad to say, not everyone will experience it. Next slide. This is a verse that actually sealed it for me and transformed my life. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will plainly, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Those those four words, I never knew you, shook me to the core. The God of all creation, the God that I love and served, was being very frank with me. He says, Rick, you're lukewarm. You're serving two masters, and I don't know who you are. That broke my heart. But I thank God that he broke my heart. Because it is then when I said, Lord, I'm just starting this, this Christian walk. 
I'm just barely opening the Bible. I had never been to a Bible study in my life. I said, if I'm going to do this to myself, I said, I'm not looking back. If you can take me like this, Lord, I don't have much to offer. But for whatever many days I have left, I want to serve you. Next slide. It says, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. There are so many people that need to hear the love of God, and God wants to use you just the way you are with your life experiences. Uh, next slide. Well, actually, the next one is a duplicate, but go ahead. Next slide. And then one more. Helen Keller lost her sight and hearing at the age of 19 months to an illness now believed to have been scarlet fever. Helen Keller is quoted as saying, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or touched, but must be felt by the heart. Here's a woman her whole life was blind and deaf. And she says the most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or touched or even heard but felt by the heart. Next slide. Romans chapter 9, 10, verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Amen. You know, the Bible declares that you and I, we, we have an appointment. We have an appointment with death. <laughs> it's not an appointment. You're, you're not going to be late. You're going to be on time to this one. There's going to be three questions the Lord will not ask you on Judgment Day. Okay, listen closely. This is judgment day. This is your day in front of the, all, the God of all creation. And this is what he's not going to ask you. He's not going to ask you if you're vaccinated. He's not going to ask you who you voted for in the presidential election. And he's not going to ask you if black lives matter. What he's going to ask you is, have you repented of your sins? Have you asked for forgiveness? Have you s accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? based on those questions, will determine where you spend eternity. Amen? As I close this morning, I'm going to close in a prayer and an invitation to take that step of faith. Let's pray. Well, Father, we thank you for the Sunday morning. We recognize this day as the Lord's day, and thank you for speaking to us through your word. Thank you for the promises, and Lord, help us all to acknowledge that we could never thank you or praise you enough. And, Lord, we thank you for sending heaven's best, your son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for our sins, for all humanity. And, Father, as a step of faith, I'm asking for someone out there who may not know you and may not, as of yet, RSVP for that wedding banquet in heaven. And I'm praying, Lord, as you know their heart, no one has to lift hands, no one has to stand. It's in the privacy of their heart. Because man looks at the outside appearance, and God looks at the heart. And I just pray, Lord, as I lead them through this prayer, that they would accept you. So, Father, I come before you in need of a Savior. I acknowledge my sin. And this day, on my own free will, I ask you for forgiveness. I repent of my sins. And I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, Lord, I ask that you would help me to live a life that gives you glory. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer this morning, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you have RSVP to the greatest wedding banquet you'll ever encounter. And as we close, Lord, I want to offer a, a time of prayer for those who are sick, for those who are afflicted with any type of disease, illness, sickness, mentally, spiritually. God, you are the author of life. You are the giver of all good things. And we believe that with man, this is impossible. 
but with you all things are possible. And Lord, I just pray by the power and the authority. I pray in the name that is above all names, the name that one day every knee will bow and every mouth will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would touch your people, you would touch your sons, your daughters, and you would heal them of the afflictions, the sickness, the disease, and cast it to the pit of hell where it belongs. Father, I pray for marriages. I pray for mothers and fathers and sons and daughters to restore relationships. I pray for provisions, Lord. Father, I pray that for unity within families, dysfunctional families. And Father, we know that you are a, a good, good Father, and you want the best for us. But you also love us so much, you give us a free will. And Lord, today we just cry out to you, Abba Father. Thank you. Thank you again. We praise you for sending heaven's best. We love you, Lord, and we are careful to give you all the glory. Thank you for the healings, physically and spiritually, that were accomplished today. And we pray this in your son Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. respond to the word give thanks to the holy one give thanks because he's given jesus christ his son and now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks with a grateful heart. to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks. Give thanks with Either. a grateful heart. Give thanks is given Jesus Christ his son and now and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of Hallelujah. Lord, truly, oh God, we give thanks today, Lord God, the day that you've made for us. 
and how exciting it is, Lord God, to be spurned forward, to be encouraged, God, to do what is good, despite all the things, despite all the circumstances that may pull us, Lord God, from another to, to another direction, Lord. You come today and given us a message of hope, and not only for us, Lord God, but for everyone that comes in contact with us. Lord, we are grateful and we're thankful, Lord, for, for this opportunity. This opportunity to be used by you, God. Thank you again, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything that's happened today so far. Lord God, how exciting it is that it's only, that it's only, a, it's not even noon yet, Lord God. And we can expect many more great things from you today and tomorrow and the day after and the day after that and forever. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am so glad that you're here today. I am I am seeing a lot of new faces, at least faces that I'm not familiar with. And I want to say hello. Hello and thank you for being here. Um, uh, first timers are cool, but second timers, man, you are you guys are awesome too. That means you came back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man. I, I like the vibe. Thank you. I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm about to break out into song. Uh, I do want to say I, I want to thank Pastor Rick for, for just mentioning um, just a, a kind words uh, towards our family. And, 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 and I want to share this. Never have I forced Joshua to do anything that he doesn't want to do. Uh, a lot of the things that you see him do up here, is, is certainly because of the teachers like Brother June and, and Sister uh, Jen, you know, growing up when he was growing up in children's ministry. That is a byproduct of the, the church and the community that we're trying to cultivate here. And I'd love for you to take part in that. Um, last few weeks, Pastor has finished his, uh, or has been uh, in a series for discipleship. And one of the great ways for you to be discipled is by volunteering in the ministry. Um, because this is a, a church that really runs on volunteers. And we don't just tell you to do this and do that. We make sure that you're understand that you're being discipled spiritually as well as getting the, gain, gaining the, uh, the skills necessary to do a, a certain thing. So uh, I, I, I do want to say I, I need to do a better job in, in, in that part uh, in, our, in our media team. Um, but it's an opportunity if you want to if you want to if you're finding or trying to find a way to be discipled volunteer in the ministry and we'll, we'll make sure that you get discipled uh both spiritually and, and 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 learning the things that help run the church amen just a few announcements uh once you e exit the doors here you're gonna see our rummage sale uh across gen ministries our youth and young adults ministry is having a rummage sale today and all the proceeds go towards their camp next year. And uh, I looked, and there's some pretty good deals there. There's one in particular. I'm not sure if you saw this, but there's a, there's a book that says, Woman's Guide to Doing the Right Things. And I was surprised because according to my wife, she does everything right. I didn't, I didn't think that you needed a book for that. No, but it's it's for it's it's not just a, a book to to like just a book. It's it's actually guided by scripture, and everyone needs guidance, even the women. Um, uh, and and yeah, I'd love for you guys to peruse that. I saw something there that looks like a fax machine, and I thought, well, that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, but it's actually a cry cut machine. So if you're into crafts and all these other things. Uh, uh, you, you'd be welcome to check that out and, and see if that's something for you. Again, all the proceeds for this go to go to the youth and young adults uh, ministry and for the camp that they're trying to organize for the coming. Or in uh, what date is that? It's it's such a secret that we don't know when it's going to be. Um, 
but it's definitely going to be a great time. Uh, this, uh, ooh, uh, since you're you're playing along, uh, save the date if you if you if you could save this date for me, January seventh. January seventh. It's a Friday. It's the first Friday of January, but it's also the first Friday of 2022. So we're gonna have a worship night that night. And I wanna see everyone there just to welcome the, the new year and to, to get off on the right foot. I know you guys, some of you guys are gonna be having resolutions. Sneak this one in for me. Do me a favor. Uh, resolve yourself to coming that Friday, amen? Can I, can, I, can I get an amen on that? <laughs> All right, hallelujah. Uh, this Friday, there's a lot of things going on this week, so bear with me. This Friday is going to be a, a cross-gen ministries J party. And you might be wondering, because I wonder the same thing, what is a J party and am I allowed to do that? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's Jesus party. It's, it's our uh, Christmas celebration with the youth and young adults. Anyone from the age of college age, high school, and college age and high school. <laughs> so even if you're like 50 and you're back in college taking some, some classes, you're welcome to join. I, I figure on going there just because I want to check it out. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about the J party. Um, it's going to be here at the uh, at the sanctuary at six o'clock this coming Friday. Um, and again, I'm sorry, there's a lot. Men's fellowship this uh, this Saturday, December 18th, and it's a breakfast potluck. Brother Ness is really was really insistent, like, hey, you need to announce this because apparently they they bring a lot of food and they need more people to eat it. Um, so uh, we welcome all the men to come that morning. Uh, I think it starts like around 7 or 8. Uh, is that correct, uh, brother? 8 o'clock. Hallelujah. So please come, please come. If you're a man, a uh, teenager, uh, please come. And lastly, I want to share this. This coming Sunday, December 19th, everyone that's here, I, I hope I see you then because it's our church's Christmas celebration. We're sharing God's love this Christmas, and not only through the service, but we're also looking for families that we can help. Um, so you're welcome to nominate a family so that we can bless this, uh, this Christmas. There's a, t a criteria that, that, that we have that, that, that they should meet, but it's simply put, if you know someone that is just in need of love this Christmas. Uh, we want to bless them. We want to. We want to be able to to use the gifts and the, the 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 many blessings that God has given us this year alone. Um, it was shared to us in our meeting. It's amazing how many, how much we've received as a gift, and you know we don't want to just hoard that. This blessing is blessed upon us so that we can share it. And and we want we want your help. We need your help. Uh, we need families that we can that we can support. And so here's the deal: you have until this Wednesday, December fifteenth, to nominate someone, uh, someone or a family. Um, you know, it could be financial need. It could be something that that they're uh, because of health or whatever. Um, you know, you you know what I mean. I think. I think for us to ha come up with a list, it's going to be unfair because uh, you know exactly a person if they are in need and, and be led by the Spirit and just just go and we're, we're looking to, to, to um, support up to 12 families. And so you, if you know someone, if you know a family, please uh, approach Sister Jen over there in the back. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, next Sunday is going to be our Christmas celebration. And our church, our church is providing lunch for you. Um,
We get an applause for lunch? <laughs> no, we're, we're, we are going to be providing lunch for you. So what we need from you is an RSVP just so that we know how many people to prepare for. Uh, is that fair? Because um, we want to make sure that we have enough for everyone. Um, so again, uh, you can text our uh, uh, secretary's number, and I can't remember what it is. Um, but approach Sister Jen in the back, or you'll find her. Or if, if you want to, yeah, we don't have it prepared. Sorry, Pastor. Um, <laughs> um, or if you want to, just come meet me in, in the back. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. Uh, we need those things from you. And again, uh, all this is possible because of God. And, and I, I can't stress enough, and I can't say it enough, that the only reason that we're able to function as a church is, is yes, the support and the prayers from you and everybody else online, but it's by the grace of God. It is truly the grace of God that we're here. Co coming into the last year, we were so scared of the pandemic that, uh, you know, it was really stressful in our, in our elders and our leaders' meetings because we weren't sure what was going to happen. And guess what? God showed up. And he didn't just show up and meet our needs. He exceeded our expectations. You know, so I, I praise the Lord. Uh, there's nothing else, no, nothing else that we can say, um, but but praise the Lord, Amen. So I do hope that you you are able to RSVP. I'm looking for nominees or no, uh, your nominations for families. We we desperately need that because again we don't just want, we don't we, we don't want to hoard the the blessings we want to we want to pass it out, amen. And again, January seven, be here. Praise and worship night, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Check, sound check. Sound check. Foundation, I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I can stand secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word. I put my hope in your holy word. Oh. Mahal kita, Panginoon Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon Kailan may ni kita ipagpapalit Pagkat sa piling mo'y langit Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon Habang buhay, papupurihan ka Habang buhay, maglilingkod sa'yo Pagkat mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon 
kailan may hindi kita ipagpapalit Pagkat sa piling mo'y langit Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon Habang buhay, papupurihan ka Habang buhay, maglilingkod sa'yo Habang buhay, pag-ibig ko sa'yo'y aalay Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon Kailan may hindi kita ipagpapalit Pagkat sa piling mo'y langit Mahal na mahal kita, Panginoon